Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com. This is part 21 of our ratio analysis video series. And in this installment, we learn all about the return on total assets. In simple terms, return on total assets is a profitability indicator that measures how efficiently the firm manages its assets to earn the operating profit or the EBIT. In this tutorial, we basically will focus on four things. Number one, learn and understand what return on total assets actually means. Number two, its formula and calculations. Number three, calculate returns on total assets for Colgate case study. And number four, its interpretations and use. But before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder. We will be needing all the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, please do so from the link in the description box below. And also, to keep yourself updated with the investment banking and core finance topics, please do subscribe to our channel, Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is return on total assets? Return on total assets is a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under the operating profitability. Return on total assets is kind of defined as how much amount of profit the company is able to generate by utilizing its total assets. The total assets basically consist of two parts, right? When we talk about uh, uh, from the point of view of balance sheet, it's divided into current assets, which is like account receivables, cash, inventory, etc. And then there is long term assets, which consist of property, plant and equipment, goodwill and intangible assets. So how much amount? of profit the company is generating by investing its total assets is, is basically the broad measure of what this is defined how this is defined as okay so when it comes to the denominator we are pretty clear as to what total assets is all about but when it is about the numerator we say that profit right is, is on the top so what kind of profit are we talking about is it uh, the gross profit or the ebit or the operating profit or is it the net profit? So let's look at the income statement to understand this first. So we start with the income statement. We have sales, we have cost of goods sold. So what we get is gross profit. After gross profit, the expenses like selling general and admin expenses are deducted. And then we have the depreciation and amortization expenses, right? So we get uh, the operating profit or EBIT here. And then after the operating profit, we deduct the interest expense. So we get EBT. From EBT, we reduce the taxes to get the net income or net profit. Okay. So there are different definitions of uh, profits, as I said. So there is this net income, EBT, EBIT, and gross profit. So which one should you take is the question here. Now think of uh, net income. What what this actually denotes is that how much the company generates in terms of income after paying what the debt holders are expected to get by way of interest expense, right? What the after paying the taxes and all the expenses are accounted for. So if you look at the total assets on one side, total assets is equal to total liabilities, right? And what does the total liability uh, signifies? It's basically debt plus equity right so if the denominator is total assets which is equal to total liabilities and it is basically a measure of funds invested from debt and equity point of view the denominator is like that the numerator should also be a measure which is pre-debt and pre equity measure what i mean by pre-debt pre-equity measure is that in the numerator also you should not, uh, let's say if we consider EBT, this is basically after deducting the interest. So this is paid to the debt holders, right? Right. So you cannot take EBT because you have already paid, taken care of the debt holders. When in the denominator, there is the sum total of debt and equity. You have to take a measure which is just before interest. So this number that is operating profit is the most suitable measure to take, uh, you know, to be considered in this uh, formula as such. So we take operating profit as a measure which is pre-debt and pre-equity. So operating profit divided by total assets is the formula for 
calculating return on total assets. So here it is return on total assets, operating profit, EBIT divided by the word average of total assets. So remember, we have been discussing this a couple of times. Average of total assets is required because when we consider the balance sheet items, it is at a single snapshot. So during the year, a lot of activities, purchases or selling of assets might have happened. So uh, in order to smoothen that numbers, we must consider a average of the two. So from the start and the end, we take the average of the total assets. So if you consider this formula, it's fairly straightforward. But the important thing to note is that why we take operating profit and operating profit being a pre equity and a pre debt measure, that's the most suitable type of profit that we should take as with respect to the total assets. So when we look at the final formula, it's something like this. In the numerator, as we discussed, is the operating profit and in the denominator is total assets. But here we take the average of the total assets. So average of the total assets is important because the total asset number is a balance sheet item. So we, you remember we had discussed this many times that when it is about the balance sheet item in the denominator, you need to take the average so that it smoothens the whole uh, total assets what has happened during the year. And why is that so? Because balance sheet items are like the snapshot items at a specific point in time. So usually we get the start of the year balance sheet and the end of the year balance sheet. So we really don't know what has happened during the year, right? But in if you look at the numerator, operating profit is for the full year during the year, right? So in order to take the better uh, measure of uh, total assets, we should not take just a single snapshot, but we should take an average of the two. So that's that's the most important thing. And uh, as I said, um, the formula is not actually very difficult, but the important thing to understand is that operating profit needs to be in the numerator because it's a pre-debt and a pre-equity measure. So let us now uh, calculate uh, the return on total assets and uh, see how it is done. Okay, so I'll use the same income statement format that we have it here. So uh, let's let's take a hypothetical example. Sales is 1000, cost of goods sold is 300. So we get the gross profit as sales minus cost of goods sold. Uh, selling general and admin expense, let's say it is 200. Depreciation and amortization expense, let's say it is again 300. So the operating profit will be 700 minus 200 minus 300. So that comes out to be 200, right? So for the denominator, we need the average total assets. So let's say uh, total assets at the start and the total assets at the end. Okay. So uh, if it was at the start, let's say it was 500 and then it changed drastically to let's say 1000. So it became 2x of the start. So we'll be taking the average number as we discussed earlier. So the average is average of 500 and 1000 and that comes out to be 750. So what is our return on total assets? Return on total assets is equal to operating profit 200 divided by 750. That is the average total assets. Okay. So this comes out to be 86.7%. All right. So whether this is good or bad, it depends on whether you want to compare it with the industry or some other company. You cannot compare, obviously, as we have discussed many a times, you cannot compare a software industry with a capital goods industry, right? So if this is a capital goods uh, sector company, you have to compare it with the industry peers itself, okay? And uh, another interpretation of return on total assets is that obviously the higher the return, better it is for the company, right? So uh, this means that the company is able to utilize its assets in a much better way in order to generate higher operating profit. So someone, some company that has a lower return on total assets, uh, we'll assume that that's not doing better comparatively, right? So uh, having understood what is return on total assets and its calculations, let's now look at how it is done in terms of uh, Colgate case. Study. So here is the balance sheet of Colgate and uh, I want you to scroll down to row number row number 129. This is where we will calculate return on total assets. 
So we'll start from 2017 because that's the place we will be able to get the average of the total assets. The average of the total assets will be the average of the two years, right? December 2016 and 17, the average of the two. But we won't be able to start with 2016 because we don't have the average number. The average number for 2016 would mean that we would also need 2015 data, which we don't have it in this Excel sheet. So let's start with 2017. The formula is operating profit EBIT divided by your average total assets. So this is equal to the operating profit. We'll find it in the income statement. So for 2017, the EBIT is 3707. Okay, divided by let's go back to the balance sheet and calculate the average of total assets for total assets i'm scrolling up and uh, here it is okay this is the total assets so this is the start and this is the end okay for 2017 so the average of the two years is we will get the average total assets okay so let's press enter we saw that 29.9% is the return on total assets for Colgate in the year of 2017. So if I copy and paste this formula for the remaining years, we see that uh, the return on total assets of the company has been steadily declining. So it was at 29.9% in 2017, but now it is 25.1% in the most recent year. Okay, so uh, that's how we can basically calculate return on total assets. So in order to uh, come to an interpretation of um, the fact that whether this is a good number or not, we have to compare it with the industry. Uh, we have we don't have the data for the full industry, but we have been comparing it with Procter & Gamble's uh, its peer. And uh, I've seen that Procter & Gamble's has a return on total assets of around 13.5%. So if you compare it with uh, Colgate, Colgate is actually doing a much better job as compared to Procter & Gamble's because Colgate is generating a operating profit which is 25.1% per unit of total assets as compared to the Procter & Gamble. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video, then you may do so by writing about it in the comments section. Also, we come up with very interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, then please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notification about our latest videos as soon as we release one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day. Thank you.